Hello, welcome back to Texas Nation. Once again, I'm Grant Levinson. I'm sitting here with Devin Walker and Aaron Wolf. We're going to talk a little NFL and college football today. Guys, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good, looking good. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into college football. Now, I want to talk about the BCS in particular. Two weeks ago, we saw the inaugural BCS rankings come out, and Oklahoma was ranked number one. We saw them fall. Now, we have Auburn atop the rankings, and they still have... Uh, they have a couple of tough games left. Devin, do you see them getting through those tough games? I actually don't. I don't see Auburn running the table. I really feel like uh, with, this, with the schedule they have to play and the fact that they have to play uh, Alabama, which is a rivalry game, and just Alabama's a really good team, I think the odds are that they're not going to make it through the season. Well, even if they did make it through Alabama, they'd still have to play an SEC championship game. Do you see them you know, coming out on top, Aaron? Uh, I mean, I agree with Devin. It's going to be difficult to beat a you know, one-loss, number-one team like Alabama. I know they're not number, number one, but they have number-one material. Um, so it's going to be difficult. Uh, they can beat them. I think they're all the way. Well, I, I agree with you there. They're led by Cam Newton, who's a very good player. I mean, the kid is 6'6", six, six, about 235, looks like your prototypical linebacker defensive end, and he's playing quarterback. Now, another team who's got a pretty good kid playing quarterback is Oregon. Darren Thomas has really been lighting it up for the Ducks, but he's been lighting it up because LaMichael James, who's probably right now looking like the best running back in, the, in, in, in college football, he's been lighting it up as well. The Oregon Ducks have so much talent. Devin, do you see them running the table? I do. Um, I actually think, I think that it's possible. I think if they were going to lose, it was gonna it's going to happen in their uh, rivalry game against Oregon State because you know those rivalry games are, are very heated. And, uh, I think if, but I really think that Oregon actually can run the table. Now, if, if they run the table, Aaron, do you see Oregon's LaMichael James getting the Heisman Trophy over Cam Newton? Uh, it's difficult. Cam Newton looks really good. I mean, the guy, when he gets the ball in the open field, looks like a tight end. Um, he's so big and taking out linebackers. Um, I don't know. I mean, you're talking about a leader to a secondary leader. So um, as long as uh, Newton can keep up his, his hard work and do what he's, do what he's doing, it's going to be difficult for, for James to take that. It will be tough for Michael James. You know, we said Cam Newton is 6'6". Six, six. Michael James is about 5'6 out there on the field, <laughs> or at least he looks like it. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about some non-automatic qualifiers in Boise State and TCU. Both of those teams right now are undefeated, and they really only have one true test left. Boise has to play Nevada, and TCU has to play Utah. Now, both of those teams are ranked. Utah is actually ranked inside the top ten. Of those two schools, who do you think has the best chance to run the table, Devin? Uh, definitely Boise. I mean, Boise, like you said, they have to play Nevada, who's not nearly the team that Utah is. Right. Utah is a very talented team, and I think that I really think that Boise State could beat pretty much anybody in the country because they've they've proven it. Aaron, um, Boise State def definitely has the easier road, um, but uh, TCU, I'd like to see them win as well because uh, they do a really good program for how small a school they are. So. TCU is a very good program. Andy Dalton outside of Katy, or out from Katy, he's you know, really been tearing it up as quarterback for the past couple of years for them. Yeah. Now let's talk about some upsets that have happened. The last three weeks we've seen the number one team go down. Most recently, Missouri took down Oklahoma. They play at Nebraska in Lincoln this week. Do you see them holding on to their top spot right now in the Big 12, or do you see Nebraska evening the playing field? Uh, you know, I really actually, I think Nebraska is actually going to come away with this one. I don't know why. I have, a, I have a really good feeling about them. I like their quarterback a lot, and I just, I don't know, I like the way they've been playing lately. Well, if, if you get this right, then I'm going to come to you and have a really good feeling about my lottery tickets because I want you picking my numbers. <laughs> Aaron, what do you see happening this weekend? No, Missouri takes this one. Uh, they're, they're on a high horse right now. They're beating an the Oklahoma team that they don't, they don't beat every year at all. So, uh, uh, no, they take Nebraska. They're, they're, they're running on all cylinders right now. They are running on all cylinders. And now I want to go back to something we talked about previously. I want to talk about the Heisman race. You've had a lot of guys who have really put their name up there. Like earlier in the season, we thought it was going to be Shoelace Robinson out of Michigan coming out and just tearing everybody apart in the Heisman race. But now it's kind of like we're putting that, that, that label on Cam Newton. You know, Cam Newton definitely has the lead, and I would say Michael James is a close second. But guys like Kellen Moore and Andrew Luck out of Stanford and even Justin Blackman, the wide receiver for Oklahoma State, has really been making some moves. Uh, so, Devin, do you see Cam Newton holding on to that spot even if Auburn would, were to lose? Uh, actually, I do. You know, and I feel like, I feel like he has the edge on, on top of some of these other guys. You talk about, you know, LaMichael James and, you know, even Shoelace, Shoelace Robinson if he would have continued to play well because week in and week out, you know, Cam Newton's playing, you know, he's playing top-level top defenses. You know, and if he's able to, 
you know, continue to have success against these top-level defenses. And, you know, I feel like he's definitely the best player in the country. Well, all we've seen recently has been prototypical quarterbacks or running backs win the Heisman Trophy. It wasn't since Vince Young have we seen someone get so close. Now, do you think that these voters might just vote Cam Newton in, Arn, because they feel, well, hey, Vince Young might have been the better player. We kind of messed up giving it to Reggie. We don't want to mess up again. Do you think they're going to get those kind of sympathy votes? Um, no, I don't think so. I think uh, this is going to really depend on uh, because Auburn's strength of schedule is, is definitely one of the leading strength of schedules in, the le in college football right now. So he's going to get a lot of credit for that. Um, but, you know, with him being the third third passing rating in the league for quarterbacks and him being so good at uh, rushing, it's going to be tough for other people to get in there and beat him out of that position. Yeah, he's actually as as second in the, in the nation in rushing yeah. yards, and he's a quarterback. And Denard Robinson, also another quarterback, is number one in rushing. So what does that tell you about these, you know, uh, dual threat quarterbacks running college football?